Hi everyone, Paul Chagowski here. I'm a developer advocate at VMware. I don't want to talk about myself too much. Let's just get right onto the meat of it. So welcome to my session of Open Source Summit. We're going to be talking about Helm. Uh, no, notice I don't have any slides. We're actually going to be doing, most of this is going to be live demo. And so I'll just have a couple of websites like the Helm website where I'll talk about things. So let's kick straight into it, shall we? So Helm is self-described as the package manager for Kubernetes. Uh, it claims to be the best way to find, share, and use software built for Kubernetes. So I thought maybe we'll put that to the test uh, and see what happens. Certainly it is the most popular package manager for Kubernetes, uh, and it is a package manager. Uh, it doesn't package your application. It packages the Kubernetes manifests that describe how your application should be deployed. So similar to apt or yum, or I guess even homebrew, you, have, you build these Helm charts and you package them, and then you can share them with other people. So there is a chart, a package, there's a Helm chart repository, which is a server where you can share and download Helm charts from. And then as part of the chart, you have the ability to do templating, right? So if you want to deploy a particular Helm chart to different places, you might need to make minor changes to the Kubernetes manifests for, the, for your application. And so you do that using templating inside of Helm. So for some fairly basic stuff, like if I want a load balancer or I don't want a load balancer, you can use variables and templates to make those differences become more uh, easier for people and keep things fairly seamless. So I think the first thing we should do is make sure Helm works, right? So I have the Helm client installed. And we're going to go ahead and try and install an application. So this is the hub, the Helm hub, hub.helm.sh. Uh, and it contains links to over a thousand ready to deploy Helm charts. So there is a Helm chart community that maintains Helm charts and different communities and companies have their own official Helm chart repos. Let's say I want to deploy everyone's favorites uh, demo application, WordPress. So if we search for WordPress, you can see we have a couple of options. Uh, Bitnami are a very reputable source of uh, both images and Helm charts. So I feel comfortable using theirs. And so I click through, it gives me instructions on how to install it. Um, we have to add their repository, and then we have to uh, run Helm install. So pretty simple, I can copy these commands and see what happens. All right, so I have a Kubernetes cluster. It is running in uh, Amazon, but it's not an EKS cluster or anything. Uh, it is a Tanzu Kubernetes grid uh, Kubernetes cluster. I don't want to go into details. We're here at an open source summit, so I just want to talk about tools. Uh, so we run Helm version. Uh, you can see we have a, both a client and server response, and they match. Right, so we want to install WordPress. We had those commands we could copy and paste from above. So there's the first one, which is adding the Bitnami repo. Once we've added that repo, we can now uh, install the chart. So you can see we're installing it and we're doing a specific version, which is always a good thing. So it's already complete. That was pretty quick. Um, because what Helm is doing is it's effectively grabbing the package. It is rendering templates and then pushing those templates up to Kubernetes. That all happens relatively quick and it doesn't actually wait for Kubernetes to actually get your app running. I believe I could have done dash dash wait uh, and it would wait, but I didn't do that. Um, so while I'm talking, Kubernetes has been deploying our app and I bet if we go ahead and run these commands, so you can see it's 
let's go and have a look at what it's done. So here we have, um, it's given it a name. We didn't specify a name, so it's picked a random name. Uh, it's showing us deployed. Um, I'm currently set to hello as my default namespace, so it's installing it to there. And here's some resources, so config maps, deployments, volume claims, pod, secrets, services, the usual things you would expect uh, in Kubernetes. And you can see not only is it deploying WordPress, but it's also deploying a database uh, to use for the, for the back end, right? So it's pretty comprehensive. And it's got these notes to tell me how to actually access my application. So I can watch the status with this. So let's go ahead and run this command and see what we get. So here it is, and I'm guessing it's working. Um, on Amazon, the external IP address it gives you is actually a host name, uh, a, a DNS name pointing to the uh, load balancer. So I should be able to access the WordPress that I just deployed. Oh, hang on, I need to break that, and then I can, wow, typing. All right, that looks like it's a website. So we open up this guy and run, oh, copy and paste for the win. Maybe that's what it was giving me all along. I don't know. I'm not very good at computers. So here we go. WordPress is installed, right? I can't even copy and paste correctly, but I can use Helm to install WordPress. So pretty good, right? Even for me. So there it is. Uh, now, WordPress obviously has an admin dashboard, so we go there, we need a username and password. Helm is smart enough to help us with those things. So if we look back to our notes, which um, there should be, there we go, open a browser, log in with the following credentials. So I can copy and paste these two commands. So what are we doing? We're echoing our username and echoing our password and the password is being collected from a secret. So Helm uh, created a random password and stored it in a Kubernetes secret, basics for encoded. So he's had to extract that out. So now we can go and actually test it. So user, password, and boom. So we have a WordPress website. Uh, all we would really need to do now is create a C name in DNS pointing to this uh, load balancer, and we would have a reasonably solid install of WordPress that we could start using uh, with very little work uh, on my behalf, which is exactly what we try and do with Helm, is get that like first user um, time to dopamine time write down so that even someone who hasn't really used Helm before should be able to at least get an app deployed or create their own uh, Helm chart. Uh, so let's do that. So in the spirit of uh, keeping things easy for people, we've tried to make it easy to uh, deploy Helm charts, uh, to create Helm charts. So first of all, let's do a Helm LS uh, and let's Helm delete um, this release here. So we don't want WordPress to stick around, especially because you now have my admin password. Um, so that's going to clean it up. Now, let's make sure I'm in the right directory. Yes, I am. All right. So I want to create a Helm chart. As a new user, I want it to be simple. So I can run Helm create hello world. Enter. And that's going to go ahead and create a basic Helm chart for me. So let's have a look what's inside this Helm chart. So you can see we have a chart.yaml, we've got a set of templates, uh, we even have some tests, and we have a values.yaml. So let's explore those things a little bit. So here we have our uh, hello world. So chart.yaml. So this is the metadata about the chart, right? So the chart has a version, a name, description, the version of the app that we're installing. And let me just set that to be that. Um, no, I think it's that. I'll, I'll fix it. It's probably wrong. Um, all right. So 
one thing I like to do is the Helm chart community has a set of uh, best practices that aren't quite fully enveloped in the Helm create command. So let's have a quick look at that. Uh, where are we? Review guidelines, new ability versioning, chart metadata. Right, so name, home, version, description, maintainer. So we're missing home and maintainers. Right, and so home will be like the website for, uh, for it. So home. Now this lives on GitHub pages. So it'll be github.com or io uh, slash charts. Uh, and then maintainers, and this is an array. And I think we do name and your GitHub username and email and your email address. So I think this now is complete. Uh, and of course, uh, you always want an extra carriage return at the end of, like a blank new line, at the end of your files. I can't tell you the number of times I have created the chart and not put that extra return in there and failed CI. So I always try and remember to put that in there. I used to have a plugin to make VS Code automatically do it, but I guess that broke uh, computers. All right, so that is my chart.yaml. Next, we have the values.yaml. And so this is the values that are going to be rendered into my templates if I don't override them. So by default, it's going to install Nginx. Now, I don't want to install Nginx, uh, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's not very exciting. Not that a Hello World app is very exciting, but it also is an insecure pod, right? So it runs as root inside the pod, and it uses port 80. And so if I want to actually deploy it in a secure way, I'm going to have to do a bunch of extra work, or I'm going to have to tell my cluster, be okay with this insecure application. I like to try and be reasonably responsible. So I am using a cluster that has pod security policies, which means Nginx will not work, right? And to save us from having to see that failure, let's go ahead and do, uh, let's hope I get it right, tag, uh, I think it's like really 0. 0 0.1, but I'll just cheat and say latest, right? And then here's some other things I can set. So I definitely want to set security context, otherwise it will fail my pod security policy, right? So I want to make sure I have no capabilities. I don't want to read only, but I do want to run as non-root and run as user. Um, ingress is disabled. Resources aren't set. Do we want to go ahead and set? We don't need to for the basic demo. But basically, you can see these. There are some default things that Helm thinks you probably want to do. And then for things like this, it's not going to force you, but it is going to provide you hints in the way of comments on how to actually set it. So I think that's what I want here. And then the other thing we need to do is modify my deployment because we're not on port 80. So here's my deployment. Uh, some interesting stuff here. So you can see here we have the double curly braces. And we're basically using the release name and some other stuff to formulate the name, the meta, various metadata, so names and labels and stuff. Uh, and we do that so that if you want to deploy the same application to uh, multiple places, you're going to get different metadata. So you're not going to have any naming collisions, right? Uh, you can do things like, here's our replica count. So if I specify six replicas, it'll, it'll render that in. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Here's my actual containers, right? That security context I just set up. Um, but what I'm looking for is this ports. So we changed the port 8080. So we'll save that off. It's a named port. Uh, which means my service is probably good. The other thing I'm going to do is this app does take, it's a Hello World app, but it takes a second to load up. And with a liveness probe, if it's not, if your app isn't listening, 
liveness probe will assume it's broken and will, re will kill the pod and create a new pod, right? Because of the deployment, I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna comment that out. The other thing I'll show you is notes. So notes lets you pass in um, notes that get rendered out when the Helm chart is installed, right? So you can give hints about how to access the application. Uh, you can see we're doing things like if ingress is enabled, then we'll print out the, the host name because we know the host name. If not, if it's a node port, well, this is how you access it with a node port. If not, this is how you access it with a cluster IP with with a, with a load balancer, sorry, and then with a cluster IP. So it'll give me different output based on the type of service I ask for. So let's go ahead and install this. I think this is all I need. Uh, let's switch across. We're in the chart, so helm install dash n, we'll give it a name, hello, uh, namespace, hello, or my, my namespace is defaulted to hello, so I don't need to put the namespace in, but just for the sake of completeness, I will. Uh, and then it's in the current directory, so I can just do a dot. And I think that's all I need for my helm install. Right, and that's it. So that's my Helm chart created and installed. It only took me a few minutes and a bunch of that was waiting around and talking while I was doing it, right? So pretty good mean time to dopamine. Uh, we got a cluster IP and so it's giving me instructions on accessing it, export the pod name, and then it's giving me, so I can just run this whole block here and we should get Right, and it's even doing the forwarding for me. Uh, let's just put that in the background. Uh, and then, um, oh, there's a failure right there. So the port forward, actually, I need to fix this to be 8080 80 to 8080 because we changed that port. So quickly in the notes, we can fix that. So fix that to there. 80, check with just 80. Okay, that's fine. And I bet I need to set that in the test as well. Uh, value service port. Ah, oh, no, that's okay. All right. So we can kill, close this off. Um, oh, and so. We use we change the port for the deployment, but because it's a named port, uh, we don't need to change anything in the service. The port here is the port that the service will expose it as. So now let's come back to our command prompt uh, and rerun this port forward. Stick that in the background. Local host 8080. Right, and so there is our uh, response. Now. Um, what do we want to show? Let, let's do something. Let's modify the Helm chart and then uh, see what we have, see what we can do. So let's change this message, and I believe we can do that by setting an environment variable called message. So let's go ahead and set that. So let's go to our values. Right up to the top, message uh, world, uh, and then in our deployment, in our template, uh, is it ends? Ends? I, I always get this wrong. No matter what, which one I do, I'll get it wrong. So, name, message, value dot values message right so this should set an environment variable with the name message with the value of values message and that is world so let's uh, go ahead and update this and see if we did it right um, so there's a few things you can do if I want to double check that I've done stuff right I can run helm lint 
Uh, you can see it's uh, no failures. I can also do Helm template dot, and that will render out the templates uh, to stand it out, uh, which is also useful if you want to give someone some pre-rendered uh, manifests, is you can set all the values as you think they should be, and then pass them on to uh, whoever is actually going to be deploying it. But we've done a Helm install, so now we want to do a Helm upgrade. Uh, the name is hello. Now, helm upgrade command, you don't need the dash n, but helm upgrade hello uh, dot. And we'll see how that goes. So that has updated it. So let's have a look at our deployment. Hello world. Uh, and let's look for env. So there's our environment variables. I guess I got it right for once. Uh, and message hello world. Um, and then do a k get all. You'll see we have our second replica set has spun up, our old replica set has spun down, and we have our new um, our new pod spinning up. Our service is still cluster IP. So why don't we do this? Why don't we? Well, let's make sure it's working. Um, Port forward. Now, if we don't want to keep having to look up our pod name, we can actually do this service slash hello, hello world. Let's just do that. Um, let's try that again. Port forward service hello, hello world 8080. Background. Oh, I think I forgot to actually background it properly. HTTP localhost. And there it is. Okay, so world. Oh, I forgot to put hello in there. Let's fix that up. So where's our helm upgrade command? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some values. So I want to set service type equals load balancer. And then I want to set message to uh, let's actually set something meaningful black lives matter right and we will save that uh oh I got my quotes wrong um upgrade set message oh escape the okay so that's done another upgrade um, deployed, etc. All right, so let's do a Helm LS. We can see what's going on. Uh, so you can see, hello, we're on to revision three. Uh, and there we go. All right, so let's do a um, we don't need that port forward anymore. So we do a get service. We now have a load balancer, so we can do a HTTP of that. Um, all right, so the load balancer is set up, but it's still actually getting wired up. So we probably need to give it a minute. Uh, is there anything else we need to look at? So you can see I ran that uh, dash dash set. I could have also done um, dash dash values. Like ends dev values dot yaml. So if I was doing something gitopsy and I wanted to have my environment uh, settings outside of my source, I could do this and have a values dot yaml in a environment repo and do something like that, right? Um, but we di we didn't do that because we're trying to keep it simple. Uh, let's have a look. Are we working yet? Perfect. So, uh, hello world is a very unimportant message. Black Lives Matter is a much more uh, important message. So that's the message we are sending out to the world. Anyone who hits that URL while this demo is live will get a worthwhile response. All right, so that's 
our Helm chart created, right? So now let's go ahead and actually, well, let's talk about uh, what other things do Helm do. So we do the templating, we've done that, but the sharing part. So we need to go package it up and then we need to be able to share it. So let's think about how we can do that. Um, so Helm package will create our package for us. And I think we just do it like Helm package dot um helm package chart path yeah so helm package dot so now we have a hello world tarball so a helm a helm chart package is a signed tarball of the directory so if we do a tar tzbf so we just test it uh you can see that the exact same set of files are there right now that's packaged, we need to share it. So we need a Helm repository, sorry, Helm chart repository. Um, we, you saw hub.helm.sh. That was a, uh, a collection of chart repositories. And so a chart repository is a website that has uh, at its base an index.yaml file. And that index.yaml file has a description of the charts that are uh, on that Helm chart repository, right? So chart name, version, some of the metadata, and a link to the actual uh, tarball that is the Helm chart. So the good thing about that is we can use any static hosting to host that. And GitHub provides a perfect place with GitHub pages. So let's have a quick look at um, well, first of all, let's commit this in. So um, let's make sure we're on a hello world, um, Black Lives Matter branch. And then we will commit this up to my repository. So we get status. One more down, git status. So there we are there. Git add dot charts hello world. Um, oh, I don't know why I did that. I'm so used to doing a dot, but I want it to be specific. And so whatever. So git status, right? There's our files. Git commit dash m uh, hello world chart. Um, but before I do that, I have had a Hello World chart here before, and I don't want to break my CI. So let's just make a quick change. Um, let's go to my chart.yaml, and let's just, I think if we just bump the version 1.0, um, that should keep us out of trouble. I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. All right. So let's run git add again. Git commit. Git push origin. All right. So we've pushed our chart up and it says we can create a pull request by going here. So let's go here. All right, so open a pull request, create pull request. So now I can show you how we're gonna end up with our Helm chart repository. So in, in our repo, we have uh, some GitHub actions uh, and we have a lint test and a release. So whenever we create a pull request, this lint test will run. And so on pull request, we're going to run lint tests. Uh, we're going to run, sorry, we're going to check, check our code out. We're going to run our lint tests. We're going to create a kind cluster. And then we're going to deploy our chart 
to the cluster and make sure it works. Right? And so that's pretty comprehensive for simple use cases. The actual testing tool is smart enough to just look at um, the charts because it's this is built to be used with a mono repo with multiple charts. So it'll look for which charts change and only test those charts. So if you look at my base here, you can see I have uh, a multiple multiple charts here. Um, and so it needs to figure out, it only needs to test out the one. Uh, and then under release, whenever we push to the main branch, uh, we will run the following tests. Again, we're going to check it out. We're going to configure Git because we're going to push to GitHub pages. Uh, we install the Helm client and then we add a dependency and we run chart releaser. And chart releaser is going to do the work of creating the Helm package. It's going to upload the package to uh, GitHub releases. So it'll create a release with GitHub. It'll upload the tarball and then it will update the index.yaml file that's sitting in GitHub pages to include that new version. All right, so you can see there, it's done the check. Hello world is the only one that's changed. So it's run the lint test. That's already complete uh, and passed. And now it's gonna create the kind cluster and actually install it. Because we don't have all the time in the world, uh, we're gonna assume that that's gonna pass the tests. Uh, and so let's come back to our pull request and let's merge it. Push and merge. All right, so we have merged it and let's go ahead and validate that it is working. So again, we'll come back to our GitHub Actions. Uh, you see our release chart is running and this should release reasonably quickly. Uh, while it's doing that, Let's come to here. Uh, we have instructions on installing it. So let's go ahead and run this command and let's get a little bit ahead of ourselves. Um, so first of all, let's change to a different namespace. Helm repo add. So while that's doing, Let's have a look at something else. So back to hello. So one thing I didn't mention is that a while back we bumped from Helm 2 to Helm 3. And one of the reasons we did that was because Helm had a piece called Tiller, a server-side piece that ran inside of Kubernetes. And it was considered to be insecure. It was certainly insecure by default. You can secure. Uh, it's not easy to secure it. And so most people don't. In the same way, it's not easy to run a secure cluster with pod security policies and everything turned on, so most people don't. So with Helm 3, we removed that uh, component. So right now, I think I'm running Helm 2, right? And so we have a plugin, uh, Helm plugin install Helm 2 to 3. It's already installed on here. Uh, and that will let us actually migrate our installed charts from Helm 2 to 3. So Helm 2 to 3, convert, delete v2 releases, hello. So we'll run this, and this will convert our Helm 2 releases into Helm 3 releases. Um, and we do a Helm ls now, and we should get blank. So then we'll want to delete our uh, our old tiller. Um, so, uh, cuddle delete dash n oops, system. Uh, I think it's what tiller dot release, tiller dot deploy. Yes, got it. Uh, and there's a service too, but I actually don't install that as part of trying to be a bit more secure. Um, there's a service account that we should probably take out. So let's go ahead and take that out. Um, there's also a role binding uh, and some other stuff, but you get the idea. You want to clean up Tiller, 
we don't need it there anymore. Uh, and then we'll link Helm 3 to Helm. Um, so now we run Helm version and we only get a server version. That's all we should get because uh, there's no tiller anymore, but we do Helm LS and we can still see the Helm chart we had installed using Helm 2. So that's a pretty seamless upgrade. Uh, we've seen some folks do some Helm 2 to 3 upgrades with some fairly extensive chart installs on clusters and it's gone smoothly. So we're pretty happy with the state of that upgrade process. Now, with that being done, let's switch to the other namespace and let's check out our, um, first of all, um, our chart released correctly. Um, so come back to Helm Charts. Uh, we'll look at GitHub Pages. And so you can see in GitHub Pages, we have index.yaml. We can look for Hello World. Um, you see Hello World uh, version 1, uh, Opal 1, and then here's version 1 here. So here's the one we just pushed. Uh, and that's why I bumped the version, because I knew I used to have one called the same thing. So with that done, we can now, uh, we, oh, we might need to redo this because uh, we're now on Helm 3. Uh, and so let's go ahead and run the Helm repo add. Uh, and I think we have to do a Helm repo update. Just make sure we've got the latest version of the charts. Uh, and then we want to do Helm install hello2. So we didn't do a dash n. So that's no longer there, um, but we can still do a namespace hello2. Um, and then my home repo is Paul's R, and then hello world. And this should work. Right, and that has worked. So K okay, get all. So there's our app installing. Let's recap. Let's talk about what we have done. We deployed a WordPress Helm chart, uh, and that was really easy, really, really easy. We then created our own Helm chart. We modified it to deploy our Hello World application. And then we did a few iterations of that Hello World application. And when we were happy with it, we then uh, created, we pushed it up to Git, and we used the Helm community provided GitHub Actions to test it and then to release it to GitHub Pages. So not only did we write a Helm chart, but we deployed it. Anyone can now deploy that Helm chart that I wrote. And we did it in a way it's not adding any extra real infrastructure or service costs to me because we're using GitHub as like a service provider almost doing it in a serverless kind of way if we want to throw some buzzwords around. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, please enjoy the rest of the Open Source Summit. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so I just did a quick uh, uh, wardrobe change. Uh, you can see I'm representing, uh, I think it was Prague uh, Open Source Summit. Uh, if we have any questions, now would be a great time. Uh, okay, Toma asks, can we talk about subcharts? So if you Remember what I did at the start with WordPress. Uh, I also deployed a database. That database was a subchart. And so you can include any other existing Helm chart in your chart as a subchart. And then you can configure it in your values, just like you do uh, in your own Helm chart. And so that lets you uh, set that dependency to MySQL and have MySQL installed alongside your application. And then you can have a condition on that. So you can say uh, MySQL disabled and use an external service like uh, Amazon's RDS 
which would mean in your local dev environment, you might have the MySQL chart deploy MySQL, but then in production, you might be using a more robust cloud provider provided uh, MySQL database. Um, and then we also have umbrella charts and library charts, uh, which are designed to help you uh, deploy uh, lots of charts that are very similar without having to write an entire chart itself. Uh, so we have kind of a couple of different abstraction layers to uh, to do that. Um, and then I think you had a follow-up. Uh, I if I need to use Minio. So yeah, I think I answered that. So I would add Minio as a chart dependency. And then I would have like if Minio enabled is true, then uh, in, then include the Minio. Uh, otherwise, don't. Uh, and we use that a lot for when you when you need an object storage in dev, but you obviously have something in production like S3 or Google Cloud uh, object storage. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do that. If you look at the Spinnaker Helm chart, which is very comprehensive, uh, you can see where we make decisions about things like uh, subcharts for Minio. Uh, if that haven't, hasn't answered your question, uh, feel free to ask further. Uh, and then Sven asks, uh, what are the benefits of Helm versus Ansible or Terraform? I think uh, the main benefit is uh, that Helm is not only your installation scripts or whatever you like to call it. Uh, it's not just like, uh, here's my resource templated out, but it also uh, solves the packaging problem uh, and just the storing and sharing of those packages. If you are already heavily invested in Ansible or Terraform, uh, it may make sense to continue using those. Uh, and then you can also use Helm with them. Uh, Terraform absolutely has some good Helm providers, and I'm certain Ansible does as well. Um, and that way, you may be using Ansible to generate the values you're passing into Helm. So there's a number of ways to do that. Uh, also, it's often you'll want to have if you're doing a lot, if you're running uh, microservices, but deploying them like a monolith, you might need to deploy six or 10 uh, charts at once. And sometimes you would reach for a tool like Ansible to help you coordinate that, or you would reach for a, a tool like Helm file, which is similar, which allows you to compose multiple charts without having to set a crazy wiring of uh, like sub charts and library charts and stuff. Uh, Toma, uh, where do you store passwords? So that is a great question. Uh, you can store the passwords in your Helm chart uh, values file, uh, encrypt that and put that in Git. You can pass them in as environment variables. Uh, and then when you're writing your Helm chart templates, you decide how you want, want to then store them in Kubernetes. Uh, so normally you would create a Kubernetes secret and render those passwords, base64 encoded into a uh, secret. You can also, bring secrets out of the picture altogether and simply expect that you already have some sort of secret management system. And that secret management system is going to um, take care of creating those secrets for you in Kubernetes. And so there's integrations with Vault, HashiCorp's Vault that would do that for you. Uh, so there's a number of ways of doing it depending on where your comfort level is and how you like to do things. Um, oh, my command prompt, Sven. Uh, so I'm using uh, Starship, which is a really comprehensive prompt on top of uh, Z Shell Bash uh, Fish, uh, and it's super useful. I, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I got turned onto that by Brian Lyles. Uh, before that, I was just using regular OMYZSH, but I find Starship to be pretty fantastic. Uh, how are we going? Um, I think. Oh, Toma, uh, relationship between Helm and Customize. So they kind of come at the problem from a different angle. So Helm solves it by solves uh, the templating problem by using Go templates, uh, and that means that you have to care about like spaces and indents, etc., in the templating. So when you're, say, embedding a string or uh, if you're doing like a, 
a set of values in an array, you have to do some templating tricks to indent them to the right uh, location. Uh, and some people don't like that and prefer to reach for something that instead of you having to like figure out those templating bits, something that understands more the structure of YAML. And so tools like Customize and YTT solve the problem by um, doing kind of overlays. So with Customize, you set a bunch of Kubernetes resources manifests, and then you can apply overlays and basically like the really basic use case, you can provide like the same uh, secret like namespace type and set a different value and have that as your secret overlay for production. And so when you deploy it to production, uh, you would tell it to use that overlay and you would get your production secret in there instead of your development secret. Uh, so they come at the problem from a different angle. Uh, when you're using customize, you certainly uh, have to then figure out how you're going to um, package and ship it. Uh, it is integrated with Kubernetes. You can do dash K in kubectl uh, and use customize. And if you really want to, you can have it up in Git. So you can do uh, kubectl create dash K, pass it to Git repo, and that will work. Um, but I, I do like the the packaging and sharing of the packages uh, that Helm provides. I'm sure we'll see more options for that uh, as the OCI spec is now pretty solid and we're starting to see good examples in uh, Docker registry tools uh, like Harbor and Quay or Key, however you, pr however you pronounce it, uh, where you can store your Helm charts as part of like an OCI image. Um, so we're starting to see ways you can store them there. And so I would imagine we'll see similar things for, um, for that. Uh, process for getting a chart into the official Helm Hub. So we, we have uh, two chart repos uh, as part of the Helm Charts community, stable and incubating. And we're actually in the middle of deprecating those uh, because we don't want the chart maintainers to be a gateway toward a gate for features getting into Helm charts. We're not experts in, say, MongoDB, so us having to review changes to a MongoDB chart uh, just slows things down. So what we're doing right now is we're getting a lot of folks to uh, self-host their own Helm charts, and that's why we've spent a lot of time and effort on the GitHub Actions to make it really easy to do that. Uh, and then, so if you want to be on hub.helm.sh, there is a, uh, a Git repo for that, which I don't remember off the top of my head. And there's a couple of places you do a pull request and you add your chart and you add your chart repository in there. So if you followed what I did to create your own uh, chart repository using GitHub pages, there's like a four or five lines of YAML you have to add to a config file in the uh, Helm Hub uh, repository. Uh, and there's also a newer uh, CNCF artifact hub uh, that does more than just Helm charts. Uh, and that has a, uh, that's, has a more GUI driven way to add your charts to that. Um, but right now, both are pretty heavily used. So I would, I would go into the Helm chart, uh, Helm hub first, and then also add it into the artifact, artifact hub. Okay, I think I have answered everything I see. Oh, how do I know the deployment status during Helm install or upgrade? So you can tell Helm to uh, wait. Um, so you saw when I ran Helm install, it just like finished right away. You can tell it to wait and it will kind of watch Kubernetes and see what's going on. Um, otherwise, you're kind of, dropping down to looking at the actual uh, Kubernetes resources you've asked for. So when I do a Helm chart install in CI, I will use, almost always use the wait command. And that way, um, you know, that it will stop and it will wait till it's installed and it will exit zero if it's successful, exit with a failure if it's not. So it gives me a better way to process the exit results of doing a Helm install or a Helm upgrade. Um, and I think that is all of the questions, and we are right at time. Uh, so 
thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Slack afterwards, uh, and I'm also available on Twitter and all the other social medias. Thank you so much.